So welcome everyone to our webinar of the month. Uh, today, we're gonna be talking about how to use VA to up your uh, design business. And we are joined here by Danae of Elite Virtual Assistance. And um, we have her by phone because we had some technical difficulties on the video side. So we, we are happy to have you here. How are you doing uh, today, Danae? I am doing great, Jason. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to hear or be here. And um, I apologize for any technical difficulties here. If I happen to pop hop on, I will hop on here. But otherwise, yeah, things are going well. Thank you. It happens. Technology, you know, that <laughs> that's just the world yeah. we live in today. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I had wanted to have you here today because this is one of the topics that a lot of our designers and uh, in a design realm that I'm in and then that we deal with on the client side that they ask about is um, how to work with VAs and what what that whole process is like and what the cost is and what the benefits and, you know, and all that is. And so that's one of the reasons I wanted to have you here today because you actually run a VA firm that specifically deals with designers, interior designers, and the realm. So if you could just tell us a little bit about how your business operates. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So basically what I do is I visit with interior designers. Um, they let me know basically what kind of help they need. We offer a you know, wide variety of services, but the most popular services are uh, 3D renders, drafting, sourcing, admin, um, we do a lot of that stuff for our clients. So basically they call me, they ask me, or they let me know what they're needing. And then I match them with somebody on my team who can help them. So everybody on my team is located across the United States. They all have several years of virtual assistant experience specific to interior design. So I am even going as far as matching based on platforms, programs, Clients come to me and, you know, they're already using specific platforms or programs, whether it's on the creative side or the admin side, we're matching based on that as well. So they know that they're working with a very good quality experienced virtual design assistant who has all the knowledge in the interior design industry and is willing to help them um, with anything that they need help with, which a lot of times is, you know, helping them grow and scale their businesses along the way. So a lot of the people that work on my team, I know I always get this question is where do you find these people mm -hmm. or how do they, you know, come about? A lot of them are actual people who went to school to become interior designers and somewhere along the line decided that the client to designer relationship just wasn't for them. And they really find joy in working uh, designer to designer services. So they prefer um, basically just assisting other interior designers. Okay. And so one of the questions that I'm usually asked is what is the cost? So what typically sure. for the services that you offer, what, what are like the cost ranges and, and is there like contracts? Is there like a minimum time that uh, they need Absolutely. to be on? Absolutely. Yep. Sure. So the contract is on an as needed basis, no minimums. So we do flat hourly rates based on the service. Um, so to give you an idea, if you need admin services, back end office help, that's going to be $40 an hour. If you need 3D renders, CAD drafting, sourcing, any type of real design work, that's at $65 an hour. Um, and those are just our most popular services, of course, if anyone needs something in addition to that or has a question about anything else, you know, I'm happy to give those prices as well. Okay. And then in terms of what are, I know you had mentioned about the 3D rendering and the drawing help. What are some other services that designers usually use your VAs for? Sure. Besides what I mentioned already, um, yes. some people are using the VAs for bookkeeping. Um, I do have some bookkeepers on the team who are very specific to interior design. I know a lot of interior designers have some difficulty finding those um, we do offer some uh, marketing, you know, website, social media, uh, trying to think of what else. Oh, um, online business management is becoming more popular. I will have designers come to me who really have no idea where they need help or 
Maybe they have an idea, but they need help streamlining processes, getting organized, building templates, so they're not constantly reinventing the wheel every time they get a new client. Online business management services are at the 65 an hour as well, and that person comes in and just helps them streamline all their processes gets things in place, and then also looks at other areas where they may need help, and then would help facilitate hiring additional virtual assistant design assistants if they need. So basically, everybody on my team kind of niches down into the areas of the industry that they excel in and that they enjoy. So if you hire someone to do construction documents in AutoCAD, that's not going to be the same person who's going to do all of your you know, invoicing and proposals in Ivy or whatever, you know, Mm -hmm. software you're using for that. Okay. One of the things that we had on here is is how to help your business grow with EAs. How have you seen designers grow with the VAs that they work with uh, from you? Sure. A lot of times, I mean, the number one way it helps is that the VDA will just help take things off of the plate of the interior designer. So the the interior designer will have way more time to grow and scale um, and work with additional clients. So maybe on their own, they can only handle a certain number of clients. But once they hire a virtual assistant to help them, they can handle a lot more clients. And then that way that increases their revenue because, you know, what they're paying their VA, they're, they're, uh, upcharging and charging their, you know, their client for that too. So the client's paying for the VA plus the designer is making whatever the difference is that they're charging the their client. So that's one of the number one ways we've seen that. We've also seen people grow their businesses by offering additional services that they may not offer. So for example, 3D renders. We have some clients that have not done 3D renders. They don't offer that service, but they're seeing a need from their clients to have that. So they start offering that as a service now. They hire a a VA to help do all their renders. And then again, they, you know, turn around and invoice the client for that and uh, make money off of that as well. That makes sense. And then from the designers that you work with, do they usually work with the same VA? So if they were to take time off, so if it's on the as needed as you had talked about. So if they needed them for a month and then they may have take a month off or take some time off, if they were to come back, would they have the same VA or would they have somebody else? Almost always they will have the same VA. So we do kind of match for long-term business relationships, even though it is an as needed service. A lot of my clients really get to know the VA and the VA gets to know them how they like things. You know, every designer runs their business a little bit differently. They might have different turnaround times. Um, You know, they just have different things, communication styles, different things in place. Mm -hmm. So once I match them with um, a VA on my team, they will typically stick with that VA as they need them ongoing. So like you said, they're more than welcome to take a month off, two months off, whatever it is. And then they are welcome to reach right back out to that person when they need them again. Okay. And then now what happens on the opposite end if the VA needs to take time off? Uh, is there internal communication that helps to uh, alleviate the time to ramp up to see what the VA was handling for the designer so there's no drop off time there? Yes, absolutely. So if a VA has to take time off, they would let myself and their client know and we would get somebody else in place that VA could help, you know, make sure they're up to speed. Um, you know, if it is a middle of a project, which is rare, you know, they would make sure that they had everything they needed so that the new VA could could take over. And then I also have some clients who will um, just from the get go, they run with their regular VA that they like to work with ongoing, but then they have a backup. So they themselves know in a pinch, they can just reach out to the backup even to help do, you know, a project or whatever it may be. Sometimes my clients get super busy and they need more than one person to help with, you know, whatever it may be. Um, Mm -hmm. And so then that way they, they have those couple of people to go to in a pinch if, you know, things come up and, and they need help right away, then they know they have that option, but they can always reach out to me at any time too. Um, And communication is huge. Um, That's the number one thing with our, 
VAs is the communication is there. Every, all my clients always know what's going on. I never want them to have a question on their invoice. Um, it's extremely rare. There are questions on invoice because of the communication between the VAs and the clients. But if there is any, I'm, I'm accessible. I'm easy to work with. I want to know about it. I will take care of it. So that's awesome. And then now how about on the training side? Cause I know with a lot of the programs, you know, especially on the rendering side, they're forever changing 2020 chief architect or whatever. They always have updates. Are the VAs keeping up on what's happening in the technology world? Yes, they are. So that is why I do match based on program, because if somebody is using 2020, I match them with some, you know, a VA that's using 2020 and keeping up on that. And that is where their expertise lies. They they work in 2020 all day, every day. And Chief Architect is another popular one. Um, SketchUp, AutoCAD. Uh, there's, a, you know, a variety of platforms out there. But yes, they are keeping up on those all the time. Okay. And then if there's any issues and then a designer needs to change, what does that process usually look like? Right. Um, basically, they would just reach out to me and let me know that for whatever reason, their VA is not working out. And then I would match them with somebody else. I do like to know, you know, the reasoning. It is rare. I've been matching people since 2009. So I'm typically really good. Um, occasionally, though, it does come up. And usually it might be either availability issue or a or a timing issue, which time zone issue, which I try to match people based on time zones, if that is going to be, um, you know, a saying I know, again, every designer runs their business a little bit differently. And some designers are more particular on the times of days, days of the week that maybe their assistant is available. So those types of things we try to work out right away. So when I'm matching, we don't run into issues. But if there is ever an issue down the road, the designer just needs to come to me and let me know what it is. So then that way I make sure that I get them a better fit the okay. second time around. Okay. And so with all of this time and all of these years, what have you heard from designers that they, that has most benefited him from working with you and the VAs? What, what have you heard from the designers that you've been working with? Right. A lot of them that I work with have just said, it's just such a weight off of their shoulders, that they have someone else that they can trust to kind of outsource and offload some work. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, they just feel like they can kind of breathe, get organized, and, and go out there and get more clients or be able to take on everyone who's coming to them. Because I get a lot of calls from a lot of clients who say, I've got X number of clients that are kind of waiting and I don't want to make these people wait this long, or I'm worried that if I make them wait too long on a waiting list, they'll go elsewhere. Um, you know, or I am ready to hire somebody so that I can take on more. So a lot of it is just the growth part of it. Um, sometimes they just maybe their business is where it's at, but they're just working way too much and they would like to reclaim their evenings or their weekends. And it's just been so nice to be able to outsource some work for that as well. Uh, but yeah, a lot of it is just the admin, admin drafting, sourcing and renders. That's some of the, I mean, the top requests we get that people just need help with. One of the other questions that we had here is so from a designer standpoint, since you actually have a lot of designers that are working with you, what have you seen in terms of how long it takes for them to actually get acclimated to the designer that they're working with? Like, is that usually a few hours, a few days, a few weeks? How long is that process? Right. That process is extremely quick because all the VAs on my team are so experienced. They've been doing this for a really long time. So what they do is they'll have a phone call with the interior designer. And I do that anyway. Um, initially, they will always have a phone call just to make sure the designer's comfortable with who I match them with as well, um, you know, so that they can talk to them and make sure this is a good fit. And then, yeah, it's usually an extremely short period of time after that you know, 15, 20 minute call designers are already going to be sending work um, to their assistant to do. So, I mean, I, 
it is so quick and easy. And that's another reason why designers love it is because there's not a long turnaround, you know, kind of turnaround time to get up or set up time to get up and going. It's pretty immediate. I also tell everyone that works through us is the communication is however the designers are most comfortable communicating. We don't have a special portal that they have to log into or anything like that, which the designers love because a lot of them may already have things in place where they're communicating with Asana or Slack or whatever it may be, that's how they'll communicate with their assistant if that's how they like it. So I'm not, um, you know, forcing them into another portal or, mm-hmm. or making them do more work just to work with somebody that's supposed to help alleviate that. We try to make everything as easy and simple as possible for, for the designers. That was actually you, you actually answered one of the other questions I, I had from one of the one of the designers. Is there a certain type of program that you use like like you just mentioned? Usually it's on the designer, but they ask, do they have to use Slack or Asana or any of those type programs? Right. No, nope. it is ex- it's up to the designer. If they already have something in place, that's what the assistant will use. If the designer doesn't have anything in place, but they want to set something up, then the assistant and them will just set up whatever that is. But yeah, I do not have a a special portal that I make all of the clients and the design assistants go through. I want the communication between the assistant and the designer to be as open as possible. And I want them to work together as they would a normal team member. And so that's why... And like I said, a lot of clients that come to me already have things in place and they don't like the idea of having another, you know, portal or something like that to have to go through to work with someone. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. We don't want to make it more cumbersome. Right. Right. (laughs) Yes. 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 That makes sense. And, and then with the hours, are they usually on the hours of the designer or is it hours on East Coast time, Pacific time? What are usually the hours that the VAs work? Sure. So um, again, all the VAs are scattered across the United States. So if I have to match based on hours, I will match that. Um, way based on how the designers work. So for mm-hmm. example, if I have a designer on the East Coast, she doesn't maybe want to work with an assistant on the West Coast because it's a three hour time yeah. difference and the designer is going to be up and going at least three hours possibly, mm-hmm. you know, before the assistant is available. So I do when the designers, when I talk to them, I do ask if that makes a difference. What we also do is if they're not in the exact time zone, the assistant will still work that the uh, the time zone of the hours that the designer needs them to, if that makes sense. So mm-hmm. um, that's not ever been um, an issue because they usually tell me up front, like, okay, I'm on the East Coast. I I prefer not to work with somebody on the West Coast. It usually the West Coast designers, you know, love working with East Coast assistants because they're already up for three hours. So it works <laughs> right. the opposite way. Um, but yeah, so that's one of the things we always ask or you know, want to know is, you know, do you have a preference on the hours? And some designers, quite honestly, will let me know, okay, my most productive time is early in the morning, I need somebody available early in the morning, or my most productive hours or are after hours, maybe evening, I don't mind if my assistant's going to be working evenings. Um, So we try to match based on that as well. Okay, okay. This is a question here from one of the designers that are on live. What are some misconceptions that you've heard about VAs that is not true for the VAs that you usually deliver? Sure. Yeah. So some misconceptions about VAs that I've heard um, are that they don't take their job seriously and are just kind of non-communicative, I guess I would say. and and it's some, unfortunately, there are out there in the world, some VAs where it is a little bit more difficult to work with. The VAs on my team are not like that. I had said earlier, communication is huge. They're proactive. I, I mean, everyone must be proactive. I don't want anything falling through the cracks. They, they're going to be reaching out to the designer if they see something, if they need something. Um, unfortunately the misconception with some VAs out there is you hand them an assignment and then you don't hear from them for two weeks and then you have to follow up and say, Hey, what's going on? That won't happen with 
the people on my team. Um, they want to know, you know, when is the expected turnaround time? When would you like this done? Even if it's admin tasks. Um, right up front, they'll ask, you know, how do you like this stuff done? Is this you're going to send me a weekly task list and I get it done by Friday? Are you sending me a daily task list and I'm getting it done by the end of the day? I mean, that communication is so clear and up front. Um, everyone on my team, this is their profession. This is their career. This is what they do for a living. They're not just side gig VAs. And I think that's where a misconception is with the VAs out there uh, in other industries. Okay. And this is another question from one of the designers that are on. How do you handle if an assignment is handed to a VA and they do not know how to complete it? How is that handled? Sure. Um, Number one, that would be extremely rare just because of how we match them in the beginning as far as, you know, if it has to, if you're needing somebody to do full on construction docs in a certain program that it would be rare they would get an assignment they wouldn't know how to complete. But let's say in the rare instance they do, that assistant would immediately let the designer and myself know. So if I need to get somebody else on that, I would get somebody else on that. But again, that that would be rare just because of how we match people in the beginning. So those things don't, you know, we we try to avoid those things. Okay. And here's another question from one of the designers that are on. What are some security measures that are in place for sensitive information? Like, for instance, social media. And I'm I'm just adding this on because they didn't have in particular what the sensitive information is. But say, for instance, if there's like social media logins or if they have logins to the back end of their office, how is that handled if there's a breach of any kind or what what are some security measures that you have in place sure so as far as security measures um obviously if there's any encrypted things that the designers are are needing to have encrypted or whatever we do that um but our contracting and the legal team has been done a great job as at making sure obviously those things are well Um, thought out and written out so that those things don't happen. Again, I've been doing this since 2009. We've never once had a security breach or, or any issues like that. My background's in the financial industry. So with compliance and all of that, I brought that into my work with interior design. And we just make sure that I guess that we don't have those. I mean, Mm Our, you know, my business is word of mouth. Um, these design assistants get the work through me. Um, they most all of them are long term members of the team. And I guess as far as you know, we don't would never want to do anything that would tarnish our name or or the profession. Okay, that's that's awesome. That's awesome. And I that is all of the questions that we had live, and that that's actually all of them that I had. It's if anybody that's here live or that's watching on the recording, if they want to get in contact with you to find out more information, how do they do so? Sure. So there's a couple different ways. Um, they could go to my website at elitedesignassistance.com. And from there, there's a contact form they could fill out that goes directly to me. Um, There is a scheduling link that they could schedule an appointment. The scheduling link on my website does go to my assistant, Brandis, and she takes those calls. If somebody specifically wants to talk to me since I was on this webinar, I'm happy to talk to anyone who's who is on live or watching the recording personally, um, they can shoot me an email at Danae at EliteDesignAssistance.com and I will email them my personal calendar link. Okay. We appreciate your time here, Danae, and that be the webinar for this month. Next month, we're going to be talking about how to sneak sustainability into your next project. So we hope to have you all here next month on the webinar of the month. And uh, we hope you all have a great day. Thank you, Jason.